everyone, and welcome back to Zoo Crafting! I am Zookeeper Siri, and we are here on our future Swan Lake, which we might need to rename because Pavo kind of originally built the Swan Lake over at his place, and I think he kind of beat us, so we might want to rename this lake. I don't know what to rename it. Tate's Lake, maybe? The Tate Pier? Like, we have the Tate and Tackle right over here, so maybe a different name for the lake, but I love it. I love it. Oh, we can now call it like a wetlands, something wetlands. But welcome back, welcome back, everybody, to Zoodesia Zoo, where we are here with a dancing swan right behind us learning about all sorts of amazing animals while building up the Tate and Tackle, our fishing shop where we are going to have fishing rods and nets and bait and all sorts of awesome things on sale right next to the beautiful fishing docks. I am really proud of these fishing docks. Oh my goodness, I really cannot wait. All right, let's swim over here. I love my little boats too, but I really cannot wait to get it all tidied and set up and then just like put out invitations to everybody and have, <gasps> what if even just once a month we could have the fishing competitions. That would be so much fun. Oh, I really can't wait for that. Oh, it's going to be awesome. All right, let's see. All the puppies are doing okay. Lily, you're a little bit hungry. They've all decided they kind of want to sit in the middle of the air for some reason. Maybe get a good view of whatever is going on over here at the dock. But yeah, so I'm so sorry, you guys, that this episode is also a little bit late after recovering from... Oh, and my box! How did I forget my box? I ran past it like three times from Bavo. Oh my goodness. But yes, after recovering from getting the server all up and going, I just needed a little bit of rest. But we're good. We're good. We're getting back on track. Getting back on track. Oh, I could just hug this tree. I'm so glad you're here, Birch Tree. And somebody asked when we're going to use more birch in our builds because I was thinking that Tate is kind of more of a birchwood dog. And I kind of forgotten about that. I think the oak wood looks best when combined with um, a lot of the stone. But I think we'll plant a whole bunch more birch trees over at the future picnic area. I'm so happy, Lily. All right, all right. So let's go ahead and open up our surprise package from Pavo to see what he has gifted us. And oh, look at them. They're little swan paddle boats and some lapis lazuli. Oh my gosh. He gave us like three of them. Oh, I'm going to go put these out on the lake right now. Oh, thank you, Pavo. Oh, it's so fun just to leave like little gifts sometimes. We should leave little gifts for people too. I wonder what kind of little gifts. What is a Siri little gift, I wonder? All right, and then let's just jump into the lake. And, oh, maybe over here? I should probably just put the paddle boats anywhere, maybe. Oh, look at it. Look at the white ones. Oh, my gosh, you guys. Ah, oh, they're so pretty. They're so pretty. Look at this. This is better than I ever dreamed for our lake. Oh, I just want to like decorate the entire lake now and make it look so awesome and fill it with more plants and have fish swimming around and all of the swans. I want to turn it into a little bit of a wetlands with proper plants. Oh gosh, and all the little animals. Let's see if we can find our little turtles. The little turtles that like ran off over to the other side of the lake. Let's see if we can find them. All right, na 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 Paddle boat races. We could have paddle boat races, which would be so fun. And turtles! We spotted the turtles! There they are! So there's two out of, I think, the three or four? Probably, I think it's three turtles that I've released in this area. Maybe just two, actually. Do I still have a turtle in a safari net somewhere? Probably. Probably. It doesn't really surprise me to find random animals in my safari nets anymore. Oh, and there's the floating pear tree. You know, we should go and we should collect those pears and, like, make them into some sort of... What can you make pears into? Make them into some sort of special food. It would be these kinds of pears. And, like, mince pie, fruit crumble, or poached pear. Oh, we should do the poached pear and, like, call it heavenly pear, um, like, dessert or something like that. And just have it specially named. And you know that those are pears collected from the middle of the sky for who knows what reasons. Oh, gosh. And it's getting a little bit late. So let's paddle over here. And the little dragon boat. These are so cool. I love these boats so much. Look at the swan boat. Oh, they're just lovely. Oh, my gosh. Pavo just... Oh. He outdoes himself with everything. They all do. It's just so fun. Oh my goodness. And I hear Anasia's been doing some fantastic things. So we might need to see if we can meet with her and go see what her area is up to soon. Tate. Oh, I love you, Tate. I love you, boy. All right. Well, let's go ahead and get started because we have so many things that we're doing. We have so much work we're trying to get accomplished. So let's go ahead and come on in here. Oh, this is looking so good. I forgot how good this is looking. This is looking really good, you guys. And let's figure out where we're going to kind of finish off this area because I'm going to leave this, the um, Fisher Dog's table, we're kind of going to work on in the future. <gasps> there's the secret! There's the secret again! Okay, you guys, here it is. 
So, you guys were right. Many of you guessed, where the heck is this little guy from? And the answer is Butterfly Mania. So a long time ago, about almost a year now, wow, I can't believe the server's been around that long. But when we tried to first build this zoo crafting server properly, we put in Butterfly Mania and it didn't work. But now it's been upgraded and updated and it works and there's over 200 butterflies in the Butterfly Mania mod and we are gonna be looking into it in depth. And look at them, he's not dying against the blocks the way the Mo Creatures butterflies do. I'm so excited. That means we can really learn a ton about butterflies and I'm just oh, this is gonna be thrilling Absolutely thrilling because I love butterflies and I love butterfly houses fun fact Pavo and both uh, both chips aka darling and Pavo who are not the same person just in case you guys are gonna start coming up with those theories They both don't like flying insects or bugs and so they're not into butterflies But I am into butterflies So we should take a little note and give it to Pavo and be like free butterfly catching service and we'll just take any of the butterflies and moths that bother him and put them into a beautiful butterfly house that would be so fun all right but let's get started on the day so I think we're just gonna start by removing some of the dirt up here and we're probably going to go ahead and try to put in some of the glass up against the lake today so I'm not really quite sure how that's gonna work where's my glass do I not have my glass because oh there's some of my glass oh yeah there's all my glass I was gonna be so sad if because of, we had to do like one day's backup I had somehow lost all my glass all right and I want to use the borderless glass pretty sure should I use a different kind of glass the borderless is just my favorite maybe the bubble glass for this actually but yeah the borderless glass is just one of my favorite types we want to have that pick because it is silk touch and then what we're going to do, I need to come back here and figure out where we're going to do this. I think maybe we'll put the glass like right here and we'll let the lake come up to this edge. So maybe like right here, then there, then there. We have to figure out how deep we're going to make the window, like how big we're going to make it. So let's come over here. And I love listening to that swan kind of trumpet over in the, uh, over in the corner over there. So I was actually looking up some swan information, like information about swans, in order to tell you guys something fun today, because I have a goal of at least trying to get to, like, telling you all three interesting animal facts every day that we do zoo crafting. So every day that we have zoo crafting, you guys can walk away knowing something new. All right, let's go ahead. I'm just, no, I put the water down in the wrong spot. Already I'm messing up. Why? This is bringing back memories of being a serious scientist. You guys remember that episode? I'm a serious scientist as I got swept away by all of the water that I poured out of the fishbowl. Oh, that was quite the headache. All right, I think maybe we'll do like here and then here and then here will be where the glass will go. So no better way to figure out if it'll work or not than just starting to put it down. All right, and then like right here is where we'll have kind of the edge. There, see, oh, this is gonna be so cool. Just being able to look straight into the lake. Oh gosh, all right, whoops, that's not quite where I wanted it. Or would that be, no, I think that would be a little bit too much. So we'll do this. All right, and then we put that there. All right, and let's see if we can make the lake come up to the window now. That would be kind of fun. Um, and I think we need carpenters. Where's my slopes? There's my carpenter slopes. All right, and then I can just like put it right here. And hmm, should that be glass? I think we'll do glass like on these edges. And I think I'll go ahead and put glass like right here, just so it looks kind of nice. There we go, there we go. But yeah, I was looking up some information about swans, because I love, love, love teaching you guys about the natural world in our days of adventure. I'm trying to figure out how to do this just right, maybe then this one. Watch out, cattail, watch out. You're in the way, cattail. And I don't want to like smish you, no! I put it in the wrong spot. Okay, let's try again. All right, cattail, I'm sorry. We're gonna have to move you. All right, there we go. You can go right back where you were. You're just gonna have to grow big again. Oh, poor thing. Poor thing, it just got smushed. All right, and then I don't know how we're gonna do this oh somebody suggested doing carpenter's blocks like where we have to do these pieces so you can put like carpenter's block grass blocks down and then on the bottom you can go down and put whatever other block you want down there so we'll work on that but anyway facts about swans turns out they are the heaviest like and no offense meant little swan being heavy is not an offense so don't worry about it but they are the heaviest flying bird in north america they weigh up to 26 pounds and that's, that's pretty hefty i've picked up babies and little toddlers who weigh about that much and you really start to feel it when they hit that weight suddenly it's not as cutesy to like carry them around anymore and they're kind of like oof like having to move them around is a little bit of an effort 
Um, and then what else did I learn? Oh, and it takes, because they're so heavy, but they also are flying birds, to get up off the ground, like out of the lake, so that they can take off into the skies and go do whatever it is swans do out in the world, they have to have up to 300 feet or like 100 meters of like a water runway of open water where they can just flap their wings, flap their wings like a little jet engine revving up so it can take off into the skies. <laughs> and when I when I heard that, it just made me laugh so hard. Just the mental image of this little, little, well, not very, little swan trying to take off where's my shovel that's what I'm looking for there's my shovel all right there we go but just the mental image of the swan like taking off into the skies like that all right and then here's the other thing I was thinking about with what we're doing new no, I forgot let's put you need did I put it down okay I put it down Oh no, it's good, it's good. It just was clear glass, so it looked like it looked like we had a small disaster there, but we're good. And I actually wanna make it go down, make the lake a little deeper. So let's come over. We're gonna make the lake deeper. There we go. Alright, and then I have to come over. Is this good? Yeah, this is good. We've got this, we've got this, you guys. This is gonna be cool. So we'll take this away and I'm gonna open this up. The swan apparently is just spinning in circles and having a good time. It has gotten out of the water several times though. So we may need to think about putting in something to keep it in the water. All right, let's do this. But yeah, I didn't know that about swans. I, I have seen swans in real life, um, but only at zoos. I've never just seen a swan kind of meandering around in the wild. Um, if you guys have, I would love to hear about it. Because we're like for some reason I just kind of have this mental image. Oh, no, I'm gonna drown. There we go That was a lot easier than I thought there's only like a couple places where we need to add in some water ourselves Here, let's make this a little deeper because I think look there's our snapping turtle. Oh, that's so fun We don't want to get our fingers snipped though. All right, and let's get out from under here. There we go But yeah, oh hello swan Hello my friend but yeah, if you guys have ever seen a swan in the wild, I would love to hear that. And then I also learned that swans actually nest. Oh, look at this. <gasps> look at how cool this is. Oh, this is looking awesome. All right, let me just get these down here real quick. But I learned that swans nest on top of um, the dens and the dams of muskrats and beavers. So when swan, the swan populations were actually significantly affected when they lost those dens like when the muskrats and the beavers were so hunted for their furs or just in general like as pests then they lost the dens that they would normally just take over and suddenly they were in a little bit of trouble because they didn't have what they needed to be able to oh those are the boats that is such a cool look <gasps> this is so cool this is so cool this is so cool oh my goodness okay i'm just way too excited sorry guys but uh, yeah, they lost like the dens that they used to take over. So swans are a little bit in trouble and their population suffered a little bit from just not having the nest that they were used to. But apparently their populations are doing pretty good now. Don't mind me, I'm just trying to get the stone all lined up at the bottom of this window. Their populations are doing much better now because they have been, um, like efforts have been made. I think they were maybe a little bit protected. There were efforts made to kind of keep swan populations strong. And so they've bounced back since like 2000. But they also almost disappeared because people wanted their pretty feathers for their pretty hats, <laughs> which we'll talk about in the future because a lot of birds in America almost went freaking extinct because people wanted pretty feathers for their hats. And I have a lot to say about that, but not today. Today, I'm just going to back up and now that I've told you a couple of facts about swans, I am going to admire this. This is so cool. Look at how cool this looks. Oh my gosh. This is going to be awesome. This is going to be so awesome. Oh my goodness. Okay. Okay. So I need to think, what else are we going to do? Let's go ahead. And that's the bubble glass. And I thought the bubble glass would be better when it's up against the lake like that. But let's use the clear glass that we can see through easier for the actual aquariums. So let's come over here, grab our borderless glass. And you guys should probably, if you want to, go ahead and start naming some of your favorite fish, your favorite freshwater fish, so that I can start accommodating the, the request by putting some, uh, some lovely freshwater fish into our fish tanks. All right, and I'm gonna need to put this in here. There we go. And boink, just to light that up so nothing decides to show up on us. All right, so fish tank. This is supposed to be the borderless glass. What did I do? Did I not use the right one? 
I'm pretty sure I used the right one. Borderless glass. Oh, I know what happened. Because we had to do the server reset, I need to fix my, my texture override I made for it. All right, that's no problem. I can work on that. No problem. It's also why the deer make noise again that, that they do all the time. All right, and just for those of you who get really excited about such things, let's go ahead and we're going to harvest up these fossils. Are we going to get anything? Nope. Nope, just stone, cobblestone. <gasps> There's a fossil, you guys. One fossil, a bone, two fossils. That's not bad. Not bad at all. Where'd they go? There they go. So here are a couple of the fossils. And yes, we will be starting the dino series, our dinosaur side series, pretty soon. It's going to be in March. So we're going to be looking for where we're going to put it in the world during this month. So some of the Saturday specials are going to start being hunting and looking around to try to find just the right place that we can have our dinosaur side series. All right, but enough babble. I'm just so excited today. We've hardly done anything again because I'm just too excited. Um... Let's see, I'm trying to figure out how deep we should make the educational tunnel of like fish. I think I wanna make it at least a little bit deeper because I wanna have at least like one or two more fish tanks on the side as well. So let's dive in you guys, let's see what we're gonna find. Who knows, who knows what mysteries we will stumble upon. Also there's pretty ammonite shells. I love those things. I love them. It's almost just fun just to collect them even if I have no idea what I'm gonna do with them. All right, we'll clear this out. More salt, wonderful, wonderful. And we'll come along here. And there's so much to do. I am so excited about the Butterfly Mania mod. Are you guys excited? I am excited, I love butterflies. Going to butterfly houses is one of my like favorite things to do when we go to zoos. All right, we'll clear this out, clear this out. And moss, look a go, boom, look at that. Ooh, there's some fossils. So we have more fossils hiding back here. Um, and let me look. So I think this is probably deep enough because then we can do like a gap and then one, two, three, maybe just one or two more blocks deep. And I think this is exactly as far as I want to go with how far the tunnel will go because I do want it to be an educational sort of little museum area and we might have a turn to the left and have maybe like a um a little quiet sitting area back there too and I think that'll be fun because our zoo can be huge and adding in those kinds of little details where you just have like an extra place for people to sit and kind of read or sit and contemplate the rest catches also I'm gonna have to be very careful when it comes to to all of the dirt. Oh gosh. Um, we might have to do some terraforming up top and you'll basically be standing right on top of the fish museum. Maybe we could have a second entrance. I didn't think about that. That actually would be really nifty to have like another entrance on the back end over here to the Tate and Tackle. Ah, see? Ideas. Ideas. You just never know what you're going to stumble on. All right, we'll clear that out. All right, and let me go ahead. We'll gently collect the fossil pieces. Just because you guys are very much into fossils and very much into... Do, 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 can I put anything else away? Go away, go away, get in there. Ugh, get in there, there we go. But yeah, very much into dinosaurs and we are going to be studying dinosaurs up quite a bit. And we have awesome Alex and wonderful Ben who are also both into prehistoric life who will be able to help educate me on the awesomeness of dinos and how to hopefully know some proper information about them. All right, let's do this because I am more of a modern animal. Oh, there's another fossil. I'm more of a modern species researcher myself. I'm into trying to conserve the species we have. And so I don't do a lot of independent research on dinosaurs. They're just not my forte. If they are your forte, that is amazing. And I am very proud that you have something you're passionate about, but they are not mine. All right, there we go. But I do want to learn more about them. All right, and we'll clear this out. So we're getting the hallway done. That's good. And anything else about swans? Um, oh, I did learn, you know those big black swan feet that look so interesting? Well, it turns out that swans will actually use their feet instead of their feathers to incubate their eggs. So if you look, like if you Google or you look in YouTube for like a swan sitting on its eggs, you'll notice that they're actually sitting on their eggs with their feet folded over their eggs. And I thought that was really like, what? That sounds so risky. Does that mean like they're not worried about crushing their eggs? And that actually makes me remember something. How did the big dinosaurs not just like completely destroy their eggs? I would love to know that. How do you be like an Argentinosaurus and lay your eggs safely? Because I, I was trying to figure that out the other day and I was just like, I wonder how, I mean, you watch a baby giraffe be born 
and it just falls. It just falls from like the sky, basically. Six feet down, practically on its head, and voila, baby giraffe is born. And it looks kind of painful and uncomfortable. So that's, but that's a bouncy little like human man, or human, what? No, a bouncy giraffe mammal. <laughs> I was thinking humans are mammals too. Gosh, that was really interesting. Bouncy human, no, Siri, no. And that's different because, you know, mammals are kind of squishy. But what if you're just an egg? What if you're just a poor little Argentinosaurus egg? And how do you get laid? Like, do they lay down? Do they? Did they make a nest? Did they step on them? Did they have to learn not to step on them? I have so many questions. So many questions. All right, I'll have to bug Ben about it. Oh, are we getting somewhere? I think we're getting somewhere. Is this big enough, wide enough? I think this is wide enough for the hallway that I have in mind. And then we'll just start coming in and we'll replace the wall for now. And then um, we'll kind of put a few spots. All right, Ooh, and we need all of this blue stuff actually, because the blue stuff is gonna be extremely useful. This granite ore, I think we could probably use it as decorative pieces. What can we turn it into? It's really nice looking. <gasps> Look at that beautiful granite block. Oh, we could probably use that down here for sure. Because some of you guys were suggesting like putting patterns on the ground. <gasps> what if I make some little divincing pieces? I wonder if I could make some divincing pieces that are like fish on the ground. I wonder if that would be too busy. Hmm. We'll look into it. You never know until you try, right guys? All right, but I think we're gonna get the hallway finished pretty soon. And once we get the hallway finished and we get like the little shop set up where, well, we don't even really need to get the shop set up. Once we get the hallway finished and we kind of get things looking nice up here and kind of tidied and finished, we will get Dr. Nami in here. And we'll finally be able to buy the fish from him and we'll eventually move him into a proper laboratory. But we've done a lot of progress since season three started. I'm pretty happy. I know it doesn't feel like a lot, but you know, Siri moves at a snail pace sometimes. So I feel like we're getting stuff done. And you guys seem to be enjoying it because we're going back at the pace you all wanted, which is you guys get to stick along for the whole adventure and learn about swans and how they incubate their eggs with their feet, which is so weird to me. I need to, I'm, I'm, I wanna go see that. Whoops, I didn't mean to get that fossil with that, but that's okay. All right, good, 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 good. And I think this is good for today. So we also got Pavo's present. I kind of feel like we need to take him a gift in return. I always think that's a good policy to have. Just go ahead and take something, whatever you happen to have at the moment, and give it back as a present rather than sit around and be like, one day I'll write that thank you note. Because then you never write the thank you note. I speak from bitter experience. And then you feel terrible because you really appreciate it. You just didn't get around to doing it. All right, so enough babble, you guys. I'm going to go ahead and clear these out. We're going to see how many pieces of grass I need to put down. Quite a few. We'll probably have to do quite a bit of terraforming up here, but I'm not too worried about that part. That, there's that and there's that and then tomorrow we will get some more of the walls and the floors and some of the ceilings put up and I think once it looks more like this finished section right here we're gonna feel like it's all just gonna come together so fast and that's kind of what always happens on these builds is we do all this work all this work all this planning and then boom suddenly it just came together so I will see you guys bright and early in the morning and hopefully I will have more interesting information for you guys either about swans like a little dancing swan who are probably gonna name Willow you guys had some amazing names we need more swans I'm probably gonna start by naming this one Willow and we should make Willow a nest and see how many swans like eggs we can get while we wait for the Tate and Tackle to be finished. Oh, that would be so cool. But all right, guys, I'll see you all tomorrow. Bye-bye.